Hello friends, welcome to CEC Live Lectures. Dear friends, today in Computer Science, we will be continuing with, uh, with our previous discussion on Human Computer Interface. This will be lecture number 2 on Human Computer Interface. In this part of the lecture, we will be discussing about uh, source data input devices. To discuss this topic, we have with us our subjects by Dr. Pavitra Bharadwaj. Dr. Bharadwaj is Assistant Professor in Department of Computer Science at Jesus and Mary College, University of Delhi. Without further ado, I would like to welcome ma'am to our studios and request her to start the lecture. Welcome ma'am. Thank you. So, in continuation with our uh, previous lecture that was on human computer interface, we are going to today again discuss about the different types of devices that are attached to a computer to provide an interaction platform between the user and the computer. Just a quick recap of what we had discussed last time. We say that a computer is a binary device that is it accepts information in the binary form that is in the form of zeros and ones. Whereas when human beings interact with the computer, they interact in a form of language which is human understandable. Human understandable means all languages like English, Hindi or any other language. So ultimately what happens is that this data or information or instructions which are in human understandable form have to be translated into a binary form which is done by the machine interface or by the input interface of the input devices. Then the data or the information is processed by the computer and the output is generated in binary form. This output which is generated in the binary form is again needed to be converted into a form which the human beings can understand. Therefore, we require some output devices which will provide an output interface to convert this data or information or output from the computer in binary form to a human understandable form. This form could be images, could be sound, could be text, could be graphics or could be any other form of computer output. So last time we had discussed some of the important input devices. We can classify the input devices as source data entry devices and human data entry devices. So human data entry devices include those devices which require a human intervention or human effort to enter data into the computer. So this could be like a keyboard, a mouse, a joystick, a trackball etc. Today we are going to discuss another class of input devices which will include source data entry devices which do not require data to be keyed in or typed in or instructions given to a computer in the form of button click like that in the mouse or trackball or that screen etc. So these devices are called as source data entry devices. So we will begin our lecture now. So source data entry devices are used for audio input, video input and to enter the source document directly into the computer. So they do not require data to be typed in, keyed in or pointed to any particular location. So first in this case, in this category we are going to talk about audio input devices. We all understand there are audio input devices, the most common is the microphone. Now in this case, in all audio input devices, two main components are very important. First is the sound card and second is the software required for recording and editing, manipulating and playing the sound. Now what is actually a sound card? 
A sound card is a device which converts the signals from analog to digital and digital to analog. We will just discuss about this. So, audio input can be provided to the computer in form of human voice or speech. It could also be provided in the form of recorded speech. So, it can be used for making telephone calls, audio and video conferences over internet, to record voice, to create audio files, embed these files to be sent over email or to translate spoken words into text. Audio input devices like a microphone is used to input a person's voice into the computer and a sound card translates analog audio signals from microphone into digital codes that the computer can store and process. Sound card also translates back the digital sound to analog signals that can be sent to the speakers. Translating spoken words into text is also known as speech recognition or voice recognition. Here I would like to explain the concept of analog signals and digital signals very briefly. All natural signals and waves are analog in nature. Analog means which can have multiple states. Whereas a computer is a digital device primarily leaving behind the analog computers. Generally the computers are all digital devices which only process data in two states that is 0 and 1 on and off. Therefore, when we supply or when we input our sound into the computer since sound is a natural wave therefore it is analog in nature. This analog signal cannot be processed by a computer and hence it needs to be manipulated or modulated in the form of a digital signal. That is it is converted into a form of on and off which has two states 0 and 1. After this has been done the data is converted into digital form then it is again processed by the computer. When the computer processes this digital data it gives out information or sound in the digital form only. This digital sound cannot be usable by the human ear and it is again converted into analog signals. Both these activities, both these steps of converting analog signals to digital and then digital back to analog for the output to the user is done by a specific device which is fitted on the motherboard which is known as the sound card. So, sound card is that device which translates these signals from analog to digital and back. So, along with the sound card you also require some software for voice recognition. As I just said that the computers are trained to read or to recognize speech and voice. So, speech recognition system or voice recognition system is a specific type of system which has been designed to take commands through the human speech or through the human voice. So, computer can be operated using voice commands and the user can dictate the commands to the sound card recording and editing the sound. So, this is particularly useful for people who have some kind of locomotive impairment, who have, who do not have their hands or who are not literate for example and even for certain people who have visual impairments. These systems are very important. But for this the need is to train the computer to recognize the voice of the user using the speech patterns and pronunciation of words. The system thus adapts to the voice of the user. Speech recognition systems are costly and difficult to develop. They are generally used by people who have difficulty in typing people with disabilities or by the corporate world for dictations etc. Audio input can be recorded on an mp3 recording and provided as an input to the computer. Next we come to the video input devices which is the digital camera 
or the video camera. Now video input is provided to the computer using a video camera or a digital camera. Now video cameras can capture full motion videos and images are digitized. They can be compressed and stored in a computer's disk. Webcam is another common example of a digital camera device which is commonly attached to the computers. It is placed above the screen to capture images of the user who is working on the computer. A video capture card allows the user to connect video devices like camcorders etc to the computer. Now digital camera works like a video camera but it can capture still images. The digital camera digitizes images, compresses them and stores them on a memory card like a flash memory. The information from the digital camera can be brought into the computer and stored. Video files are edited using software like the VLC media player etc. Computer vision is an area of computer science that deals with images and it has applications in the areas of robotics etc. We all understand these days it is very commonly known that video eyes or camera eyes are put for people who have low vision or who have problems in seeing objects with in light or in less light etc. So special kinds of medical devices are being used which can be used by people who have some difficulty or disability in viewing or seeing. This is possible using all these kinds of video cameras and very very sophisticated technology is used to design or to provide such kind of an interface to the users. So this is the audio and the video input devices. Next we are going to talk about optical input devices. Optical input devices includes those devices which use light as a source of input. So scanner is an example of the optical input device. Optical input devices are magnetic ink character reader or commonly known as MICR, optical mark reader called optical OMR, optical character reader called the OCR and the barcode reader. All these devices are commonly used as input for documents and to read data from printed labels etc. So the first device that we discuss is the scanner. Scanner is a very common device and most of us have already seen and used a scanner. A scanner is an input device that accepts paper documents as an input. It is used to input data directly into the computer to the into form the source document without copying and typing the data. The input data to be scanned can be a picture, a text or a mark on the paper. It is an optical input device and uses light as an input source to convert an image into an electronic form that can be stored on the computer. Now scanners can be of two types, flatbed and handheld. So basically the scanner scans the full page documents and the quality of scan depends upon the resolution of the scanner. We had seen the topic of resolution earlier also. It means the resolution is measured in dots per inch. How many dots are shown in per inch? The image that is scanned by a scanner is saved on the computer in the form of a bitmap. So the bitmap has to be of a very high resolution then we say that the scanner is of good quality. So it increases with the increase in resolution. Along with the scanner we also get some software which is known as the utility software with which we can manipulate, edit and print the documents that have been scanned and the images stored in the computer. Handheld scanner and flatbed scanners as I just said are the two common types of scanners which are used. 
Now, flatbed scanners are the commonly used scanners which we see on tabletops, etc., in offices. These scanners are used to scan full page documents. But in places where we require only partial images of a page, a handheld scanner can also be used. But a handheld scanner, if you want to scan a full page document with a handheld scanner, then multiple images of the page need to be taken and then they need to be manipulated and appended with each other using the utility software of the scanner. Generally for one page whole full page document the best quality output is given by a flatbed scanner. So this is an image of a handheld scanner. So basically these are portable and are placed over the documents to be scanned. They consist of light emitting diodes and the scanned documents are converted and stored as an image in the computer memory. And they are moved at a constant speed over the document to be scanned to get good quality scans. These are basically used where the volume of the scanned document is less, the picture or the photo which is required is small and there is less need for a full page scan. So basically it is the price tags, the labels and the ISBN numbers on the books that are scanned with the help of a handheld scanner. This is a flatbed scanner as you can see in the picture. So it provides a high quality scan in a single pass. It is a box shaped machine similar to a photocopy machine and has a glass top and a lid that covers the glass. The document to be scanned is placed on the glass top which activates the light beam beneath the glass top and starts the scan from left to right. They are largely used to scan full page documents. Next we are going to talk about the optical character recognition. Now we all understand that the document which is scanned using a flatbed scanner or a handheld scanner basically stores the file as an image. So this image file cannot be the data inside the image cannot be manipulated by the user. It is only used in the form of an image. But in cases where we require to re extract the data from a document and also may require that data for further processing, editing or require that data for any kind of further programming, in that case a scanner, a usual scanner may not work. Then what we require is a device which can read the characters. So this device is used using an optical character recognition technique. So an optical character recognizer, it picks up the characters from the documents, it saves those characters in the form of files. They can be saved in different formats like an excel sheet or a database uh, file or whichever file the user wishes it to be saved in and this is then can this data can then also be manipulated, corrected, edited by the user or by the owner of the data. So OCR is a technique for scanning of a printed page, translating it and then using it the OCR software to recognize the ASCII code for each character that has been read. So the ASCII stands for American Standard Code for Information Interchange. OCR uses optical character reader for recognition. It stores the scanned image as bitmap image which is a grid of dots. We cannot edit the text that has been scanned. To edit the scanned text, we actually need a OCR software. So the OCR software translates the array of dots into text that the computer can interpret as words and letters. To recognize the words and letters of the text, the OCR software compares the pattern on the scanned image with the pattern stored inside the computer. The text lines generated via OCR can be stored in different formats. So this shows, this diagram actually shows how an OCR is used. So it will pick up each character from the scanned document. It will 
you put the document inside the OCR reader, it gives the bitmap image. This bitmap image is then read as ASCII text for each of those characters which has been read and that ASCII text is then stored inside the computer's memory. So, this data can be extracted from there. Next scan type of scanner that we are going to discuss is called the magnetic ink character reader and the technique is called magnetic ink character recognition. Now we all have seen that banks these days are have kept machines which can accept checks. Those checks which the bank machines are accepting, they also provide the checks have got a special type of number written on the bottom of the check. This number is written using a specific kind of ink. This is not a usual ink, this is a magnetic ink. So, MICR is used in banks to process large volumes of checks. It is used for recognizing the magnetic encoding numbers printed at the bottom of a check. The numbers on the check are human readable and are printed using an ink which contains iron particles. So this you can see is these numbers are written using the MICR, the magnetic ink, the ink which has iron particles on them. So, these are machine readable numbers and can easily be read by the magnetic ink character reader. So, these numbers are magnetized. MICR uses magnetic ink character reader for character recognition. When a check is passed through a magnetic ink character reader, the magnetic field causes the head read head to recognize the characters or numbers of the the readers are generally used in banks to process the checks. The numbers in the bottom of the check include the bank number, the branch number, the check number and because of the MICR, the reading of the checks and the MICR is becoming much faster. It is done at a speed which is faster than the OCR technique, OCR speed. So, because of the MICR, it has been possible to recognize characters which are written on the checks by banks through machines. So, this is another machine which is the MICR, the magnetic ink character reader. The next we are going to discuss is optical mark recognition or the technique called OMR. We all have filled the OMR form at different stages, maybe for entrance tests it is used or for filling up the forms or data. So, OMR is used to detect marks on a paper. The OMR are marks are recognized by their darkness. The OMR uses an optical mark reader to read the marks. The OMR reader scans the forms, detects the mark that is positioned correctly on the paper and is darker than the surrounding paper and passes this information to the computer for processing by the application software. So, OMR basically uses a beam of light and wherever the beam of light gets reflected, the mark is detected because we are saying that we, we distinguish the dark area as compared to the surrounding area which has not been darkened, which do not have a mark on it. So, the OMR will recognize the OMR, the light beam will be reflected from the areas where the light, where there is no mark. And the places where a dark mark is set, the light beam will be absorbed. And hence, using this technique, the OMR reader will read the documents. So, optical mark reader detects the presence of marks by measuring the reflected light. The amount of light which is reflected can be measured and the marks can be read. Once again, the marks, the data which has been captured using the OMR reader is available in any kind of format which the user wishes in kind of a spreadsheet or in kind of a database file. Accordingly, the customized application software can be required. So, this is used in case of objective tests, etc. Now, next we are going to discuss is the barcode reader. 
Barcode readers are generally seen commonly in uh, shopping uh, complexes, in malls, in shops, in libraries also. So, we all understand what is barcode. So, barcode is actually a combination of vertical lines of varying thickness. Each product has a unique code which can be scanned using the barcode. Again the barcode reader also uses a light beam like infrared beam to read the documents, to read the lines. So, these are adjacent lines of different width that are machine readable. So, they are used for books etc. And this information is input into the computer which interprets the code using the spacing and thickness of the bars. Handheld barcode readers are used in labels, in libraries, at airports, at different places. These are also fast and accurate and these give a lot of information to the user which is required for it. So, dear friends, we have almost completed the end of the input devices. We shall be continuing on this gradually. Later on, we will be talking about the output devices and a little more about how human computer interface can be designed. Therefore, I would like you to uh, focus on more on the design of the interface because the interface is very important. A poorly designed interface can lead to a bad design of the program and hence it will lead to further problems for the users who are going to use that computer system for entering their data as well as for gathering output from the computer system. Dear friends, so far in this lecture we have covered the source uh, data inter input devices and human computer interface. On that note, we will take a break and after the break we will be resuming our lecture. Thank you for watching.
Hello friends, welcome back to CEC Live Lectures. Dear friends, so far in this human computer interface lecture, we have covered the in source input data devices. In this part of the lecture, we will be con we will be talking about output devices and computer human interface designs. To discuss this topic, we have with us our subjects, Dr. Pavitra Bharadwaj, and let's welcome Dr. Bharadwaj to our to our lecture and ask her to assume the lecture. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you. So, in the previous segment, we were talking about human computer interface and we had discussed the topic of input devices. In case of input devices, we had talked about how data is entered by the user using the various input devices like the keyboard, the mouse, joystick, etc. And then how this data is converted by the computer in machine readable form that is the binary form. After the data is processed, the user is given the output. Now, the user is given the output in a form which the user can follow, which the user desires to take it in. Therefore, that form is again, it could be images, it could be text file, it could be video, it could be audio, it could be any kind of form in which the user desires to take the output. So, in this segment, we are going to talk about the output devices or the devices which we require or which, we, which the computer requires to give the processed information to the user, to give the results of the user's processing to the back to the user. So, in case of output devices, we will discuss about the different types of output devices that are there. We will talk about the two basic categories of output devices that is the hard copy devices and the soft copy devices. In that also we will talk about the various options which are available to the user for hard copy as well as for soft copy or intangible output from the computer. So, basically output devices provide output to the user which is generated after processing the input data. The process data presented to the user via output devices, it could be in any form like text, graphics, audio, video, etc. The output could be on a paper or on a film in tangible form or in an intangible form as audio, video or electronic form. So, we will classify the output devices as hard copy devices and soft copy devices. In case of hard copy devices, we will be talking about the printers, in case then we will be talking about the plotters and also a lesser known output format which is known as the computer output on a microfilm. In case of soft copy devices, the most commonly used output device of a computer that is monitor comes first. Then we have the visual display terminals which again are a different kind of display device which is more like a monitor only. Then we have the video output devices and we have the audio output devices. So, to begin with our discussion, we will talk about the hard copy devices first. So, the output devices receive the information from the computer in a machine readable form. The output interface of the output devices converts this machine readable form or machine understandable binary form of information into the human understandable or desirable form. This output, this translation is basically done by the output interface. Now, we come to hard copy devices. See, the output is obtained in a tangible form on a paper or any surface is called a hard copy output. Hard copy output can be stored permanently and is portable. It can be read or used without a computer. And hard copy devices that generate this kind of output are called hard copy devices. So, printer, plotter and microfiche are common hard copy devices. So, the first type of hard copy device which is the most commonly used, most popular hard copy device is the printer. So, we all understand that a printer prints the output of the computer on a page. So, this print, the printers again are of various types, but basically the quality of the printer is determined by the resolution of the printout. The resolution is again measured in dots per inch or DPI. 
higher the resolution better is the quality of the printout better is the quality of the print and also the cost of the printers also increase with the greater resolution printouts that they are able to produce. So, printers are generally used to print textual information, but nowadays we have printers which can print very effectively they print all kinds of graphics and colors. Earlier printers which were used were monochrome printers they only printed in black color. So, printers are classified into two categories. The first category is known as impact printers and the second category is known as non-impact printers. So, impact printers use the typewriter approach of physically striking a typeface against the paper and an inked ribbon. Impact printers can print a character or an entire line at a time. Impact printers are low cost printers and they are useful for bulk printing. Now, impact printers we have three main types of printers. First is the dot matrix printers which is commonly known as the DMP. Second is the daisy wheel printer and the third is the drum printer. So, we are going to talk about each of these separately. Now, the dot matrix printer as the name itself suggests is going to print each character in the form of a matrix of dots that is a combination of dots. If you magnify each character and see using a lens, you will see that each character is composed of a number of fine dots. This is because the, uh, the dot matrix printer, it uses the impact technique and each character is form in the form of a small hammer which strikes on the inked ribbon and the impression is cast on the paper which is at the back side. If you see a dot matrix printer printout, from the reverse side also sometimes you can feel the texture. But a very important advantage of a dot matrix printer is that it can print on unusually larger sizes of paper. Therefore, it is in, in, instead of the technology being a little old and the printer being a little noisy and slow, this is still used commonly in case of payroll application, in case of some banking, financial accounts and other kinds of application. So, the speed, the printing speed of a dot matrix printer, it is from 200 to 600 characters per second and the resolution ranges from 72 to 360 dots per inch. Therefore, we see that it is a much slower printer and it also creates a lot amount of sound when it is working. It only prints in black and white and only alphanumeric characters, special characters and some of the dot matrix printers may also print jar charts and some simple graphics. These are available in two sizes, 80 column printer and 132 column printer. So, this is the picture of a dot matrix printer which we have commonly seen in case of banks and in case of accounts offices etc. The next type of printer that we are going to talk about is also an impact printer. This is known as daisy wheel printer. Now, it has the name daisy wheel because its print head is in the shape of the daisy flower. It is like a flower in the shape. So, it is given the name the daisy wheel, daisy flower. So, it prints one character at a time. This is a much expensive printer as compared to the dot matrix printer. It is also very slow printer and it can print only text that is this type of printer cannot be used to print graphics etc. The speed is about 100 characters per second and the quality of printing is not very good. So, it is used where high quality printing is not required and no graphics are needed. This is a better quality document which is better than the document printed by a dot matrix printer. So, this is the picture of the daisy wheel printer as you can see it looks much like the keyboard and the print head looks like a daisy flower in shape. The next printer that we are discussing is a drum printer. 
The drum printer is the only line printer that we are going to discuss. Line printer means that it is going to print one line at a time. These are faster and expensive than other character printers that is dot matrix and daisy wheel. It produces a low quality output, but it is faster. It can print about 200 to 2500 lines per minute. It is generally used for voluminous print outputs which are not requiring much quality. Next we come to non-impact printers. So, non-impact printers are those printers which do not where there is no contact between no physical contact between the print head and the paper. They basically use different technologies like some chemicals or some laser beam etc. to create the printout on the page. But there is no physical contact between the printer, print head and the page. So, it does not hit or impact a ribbon to print. It uses electrostatic chemicals and ink jet technologies. These printers are faster and quieter than the impact printers. They produce high quality output and they can be used for text as well as graphics and they are available both in color as well as black and white. So the two types of printers in case of non-impact printers that are commonly available are ink jet printers and laser jet printers. Now ink jet printers sprays ink drops directly on the paper like a jet. Resolution is more than 500 dpi. It produces high quality graphics and text and it is commonly found in homes and offices. So this is the image of an ink jet printer. Now this printer is available both as a black and white and as well as a colored printer. Now you must have commonly seen that whenever you take a printout from the ink jet printer, the ink drops need to be dried up for some time. This is because the ink drops have been sprayed on the paper with a very high pressure and they create the image. So if suddenly the if as soon as the paper comes out of the printer and the user touches it there are chances that the ink may get smudged or the printout may be dis uh, disturbed or it may be uh, damaged. The next printer that we see is a laser printer. Now laser printer is provides the best quality of text and graphics printing. Laser printer process and store the entire page before printing. So basically laser printers are page printers. They can print 5 to 24 pages of text per minute and the resolution is from 400 to 1200 dpi. These are faster, more expensive and much quieter. They are also used in case of uh, in cases where you need a large volume of printing and of course these the printouts which come from laser printers are much more expensive. So basically we have talked about two types of printers, the impact printers and the non-impact printers. The non-impact printers are more modern in technology and they are quieter, more expensive but produce a higher resolution printout which is high in quality and speed. Now the next very important device, output device that we will discuss is the plotter. Now plotter is, this is the picture of the plotter as you can see and a map or a chart is being printed by the plotter. So basically plotters are used for printing of design documents, of maps, charts, graphics, large size graphics are design, are printed using plotters. Plotters are also very commonly used in applications which use the computer aided designing CAD and CAM applications to create the blueprint of houses, of machines, of ships, of automobiles etc. So a plotter is used for vector graphics output to draw graph, map, blueprint of ships, buildings. They use pens of different colors. 
that is cyan, magenta, yellow and black for drawing. Plotter draws continuous and accurate lines in contrast to printers where a line is drawn as closely spaced dots. It is a slow output device and is quite expensive. So plotters are of two types. First is the drum plotter and the second is the flatbed plotter. Now in case of the drum plotter, there is a drum on which the paper is mounted and you have the four colored pens which move on this paper. So the movement of the paper and the drum causes the image to be printed on the plotter. In this case, pens are mounted on a stationary carriage and they can only move horizontally. For vertical movement, the drum on which the paper is fixed moves clockwise and anti-clockwise. The most co commonly used plotters are the flatbed plotters. The, in this case, the paper is fixed on a flatbed and the, pa the paper is fixed, it is stationary and the pens are mounted on the carriage that move horizontally and vertically to draw lines. So as I just told you, it is used in CAD, CAM and AutoCAD type of applications. So this, therefore we see that plotters are very important where we need to print graphics. And printers are very common where you need to print more of text or graphics on a small size or limited size of paper. This is the image of a drum plotter and this is the image of a flatbed plotter. As you can see in this case, the pens are fixed on the carriage and the paper is placed on the glass top. So the pens move both vertically and horizontally to create the image or the map or the graph on the stationary paper. The next type of output that we are going to talk about is the computer output on a microfilm. A microfilm is a fish or a roll format. It is used to record computer output directly from the computer tape or cartridge. It is a high speed and low cost process. It can produce data in microfilm form at a much faster speed from that of a paper printer. The standard roll film is 16 mm wide with a film image that is 1 upon 24th of the original document. So the copy basically it is the copy of the film is used and you have a microfilm reader. So the copy of the document is saved on this microfilm and you use the reader to magnify that image and keep it. Basically this microfilm is used for keeping archival data or for historic data which can, which can be stored for longer periods of time or for some very sensitive kind of information which is not saved on printed in case of printed formats. So it saves the data in the image format. So the next category of devices will be the soft copy devices. So soft copy devices are basically the output is obtained in an intangible form on a visual display or audio unit or video unit which is called a soft copy output. The soft copy allows corrections to be made. It can be stored and can be sent via email to other users. Soft copy output requires a computer to be read or used. The devices that generate soft copy output are called soft copy devices. In case of soft copy devices, we will see there are different examples like the computer monitor, the visual display terminal, the video system and the audio response system. Now we all are aware of the computer monitors. We have seen how the technology of computer monitors has evolved over the years. Earlier the monitors which were available were CRT monitors that is the cathode ray tube monitors. Now we have we can see there are flat panel monitors which earlier there were LCD monitors now we have LED monitors. So in case of monitors we talk about topics like refresh rate of the monitor. The higher the refresh rate of the monitor, the better is the quality of the image. 
Again, the resolution of the monitor is one factor which determines the quality of the output which a monitor can show. We can adjust the resolution of the monitor using the different kind of application settings which are available in the specific kind of software. When we talk about visual display terminals, you must have seen at several information kiosks at the airports, railway station or any public places, we see that they, we are provided with a monitor or a display terminal, along with this there is provided a keyboard. So basically a visual display terminal means a monitor which is attached to a keyboard. Now this visual display terminal could be of three types. It could be a dumb terminal, an intelligent terminal or a smart terminal. A dumb terminal only gives the user input and output facility. There is no processing and storage which is available at the dumb terminal. The smart terminal allows the user with limited functionality that is it allows the user to process its request but there is no facility for storing of any kind of data and software on the terminal. It is connected to a server where all the data storage takes place. However, it has limited processing functionality. Intelligent terminals are those terminals which provide for both storage as well as processing functionalities to be provided to the users. So these are visual display terminals. Then we have several other types of output devices like for example, we have output on a video output devices. Video output devices, one of the most commonly used output devices are projectors. Projectors are basically used to show the output to a larger number of audience like in conferences, in classrooms, in teaching, in training and learning etc. So projectors also are of several categories, several technologies are evolving in case of the use of projectors also. Nowadays the most commonly used projectors are the LED projectors. So these projectors are very efficient and they have high quality image projection and they have a lamp which has got the light of the life of the lamp is measured in hours. So nowadays we have very high quality projectors which are available at a reasonably low cost. Then we have audio output devices or audio response systems. Audio output devices are generally the speakers, the most common use, commonly used audio output device attached to a computer is the speaker. Besides this, as technology is evolving, we see there are devices which use audio response system that is the system itself reads the data or the information to the user. So we have seen that the computer human interface is provided or is created by a large number of devices which are available. Now the choice that a user makes to use a particular kind of device, it depends on the user's preferences, the user's capabilities and understanding. Nowadays the latest trend is to use every citizen's interface. Every citizen's interface means that all the users of the computers they must be able to use the interface. The user should not be asked to adapt to the computer. In fact, the devices should be so de designed that any user can use them. These should be intuitive, they should be cost friendly, they should be, they can be easily used by, they should be adaptive according to the user's needs. So they, they can be used by a person who is absolutely not literate, they can be used by a person who has got some kind of uh, physical impairments or differently able people etc. So the design of interfaces is a very important aspect of the future trends of computing. This is one of the key areas in which research is going on to create computers which are very very user friendly and which provides a great interface for people to interact with the computing system. With this, we will wind up our session on human computer interface. Dear friends, we hope that with today's lecture, you were able to understand the concept of human computer interface. On that note, we would like to thank Dr. Pravita Bharadwaj for coming here and delivering this wonderful lecture. And thank you, dear friends, for watching our lecture. Stay tuned and keep watching. Thank you.